okay? What do we achieve from it? Well, what we achieve from it is, here's the 1990 levels. Remember the target was 80% below 1990, which is down here somewhere, okay? What they were able to do based on what they assumed is their baseline scenario, which they think was just could normally occur, is to get to here with what many people may consider draconian measures uh, on the transportation side, nowhere near what's necessary to really reach, if you will, that reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, st strictly from transportation. Again, I'm just talking about the transportation sector, okay? So the message there is that the transportation sector is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. There are a lot of public policy people, there are a lot of professors in this country, a lot of transportation professors that are trying to figure out what it is we need to do to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, okay? Now let me switch to the effect. I am much more interested in the effect as an engineer. Um, more strategic, it deals with kind of the engineering side of things. Uh, it's long enough away that I can say whatever I want, I will never be alive to probably see it, uh, and say whether I was true or not, although this is being recorded apparently. So, so in other words, this is really neat for me, okay? I love this stuff, this, this is adaptation. Um, well, what do we mean by adaptation? The Intergovernmental Panel on, on Climate Change says this is their definition of, of, of adaptation, and there are some key words in here. How can we adjust practices, processes, or structures of systems, that's us, engineers, to deal with projected or actual changes in climate, which obviously begs the question, well, what are those changes likely to be? And then we either do it spontaneously, which means we will react when something happens, Hurricane Katrina, or we will actually, God forbid, plan ahead and anticipate these things and try to think about what it is that we may do. The Pew Center for Global Climate Change in Washington, D.C. also has their definition of adaptation. And there's some key words here as well. What do we do to avoid, withstand, or take advantage of projected, actual projected climate change? And how can we decrease the system's vulnerability to those changes? Or how do we increase the resilience of our transportation system in the event of things happening? So some key words that you're gonna hear me talk about uh, in a minute. There are two types of, quote, events uh, that when we talk about adaptation, we are interested in. The so-called extreme events, which are incidents like hurricanes. Uh, and then there's the longer term change, sea level rise is gonna happen slowly, but it's gonna happen type of thing. Now, this slide is in honor of Kansas, okay? And it's not because I'm here. I gave this talk, not this talk, I gave a similar talk a year or so ago in New Mexico and your Secretary of Transportation, Deb Miller, was there. And I only had a picture of a hurricane on this slide. And I, after this slide, I've known her for many years. She came up to me and said, well, Mike, you know, you, you just could never do that talk in Kansas because we don't have hurricanes in Kansas. And I looked at her and I said, not yet you don't. Uh, and she said, oh no, no, we gotta have something different. So I put a tornado on for you, okay? So you have a tornado and I'm, I'm told that there is some, sense, some that, that there's some studies that suggest you may have more and higher intensity uh, tornadoes in the future. So extreme events, we have examples, okay? In terms of what happens when we have an above average uh, something occurring. This is, these are of course pictures from Katrina, and obviously there are significant issues with regard to the impact on the community. I'm a transportation guy, I'm focusing on transportation. Okay, so these pictures primarily focus on transportation. Um, this, is, this, is, this is a major uh, discontinuation uh, or destruction of major transportation facilities. This, this was because of the storm surge. Um, those bridges or interstate highways were knocked out. Um, this is a railroad bridge that, that was knocked out. Um, and so there's clearly some significant issues with associated with more intense and perhaps more frequent events in the future. There's also the longer term environmental changes which we as engineers have to deal with. When we design a road, we look at the saturation of the soil, we look at ambient temperatures, we look at all those things when we design something. So this particular slide shows on the upper left is, is, is pavement uh, because of high temperatures, not exactly doing what it's supposed to do. Temperatures on the lower left. Lower right is the permafrost melting in Alaska which is now happening now, these right now as we speak. And then upper right, of course, is kind of the rising of the levels and flooding that's going to occur, uh, likely to occur based on most projections. Now, it turns out that the Transportation Research Board did a special report uh, two years ago. Uh, I, I was part of this, and they said, look, what are the potential climate changes that we can reasonably expect, and what are their impacts on transportation, or likely to be their impacts on transportation? Uh, this quote comes right from the front part of it, which basically says, look, we can no longer rely on our past assumptions with regard to climate and weather, local conditions, as being what's gonna happen in the future. And if we're designing our transit facilities, our highways and our airports, based on these wonderful monographs and computer software packages that have been dealt with for the last 20, 25, 30 years, ain't gonna happen 25, 30 years from now. We need to think about this. 
Um, and they actually suggested, which was quite interesting, um, that the climate adaptation issue is perhaps as important, if not more so, to this country than the issue of greenhouse gas mitigation. Uh, primarily because even if we stopped tomorrow emitting greenhouse gases, if I had a magic wand and said no more greenhouse gas emissions, climate scientists will tell you that will still change. The gases are still up there, things are still changing, uh, and so it's going to happen anyway and we need to deal with it. And I thought the last bullet here was quite interesting. Uh, the impacts uh, could be widespread and very costly in terms of both human and economic terms. So clearly a, a statement on the part of a National Academy of Engineering group that this is something we need to think about very carefully. Well, what did they think based on the summary of what climate scientists have done? Well, they say it's very likely that we're going to see increases in very hot days. Uh, there will be increases um, in virtually certain increases in Arctic temperatures. Virtually certain there will be rising sea levels. Very likely that there will be increases in the intensity of precipitation and, and likely that there will be increases in hurricane intensity. Likely, very likely, virtually certain means the level of likelihood or the level sense of that these things may actually occur. Okay? So there, are, there is some sense out there that some things are really going to happen. There's another group called the Global Change Research Program, uh, which has also done some very interesting work uh, on what the likely changes are going to be in the future. This comes from them. Uh, sea level rise, storm surge will increase. Uh, flooding from more intense downpours are likely to occur. This will vary by part of the country, by the way, and I'll show you in a minute where Kansas is. I love Kansas dearly, but I hope you have your shorts and t-shirts ready. Um, uh, increase in extreme heat uh, will, it will have some limitations on transportation operations. Uh, strong hurricanes are likely to be more intense uh, in the future. Uh, Arctic, the Arctic is clearly going to warm. Um, and you're going to see a melting of permafrost. The Alaska Department of Transportation today is redesigning highways because this, the foundation of those roads are sinking. The government of the state government of Alaska is moving villages away from the coast, physically moving them away from the coast because of wave action and erosion that's occurring because the ice that used to be there to protect the shore is no longer there. So Alaska is part of the United States. Um, and so you can't say, well, this is never going to happen because it's happening now, at least in one particular area that's very, very targeted on the issue of, of ice, whatever. Okay, so these, you may have seen these before. I'm, I'll just go through these quickly because this is not my, I'm not a climate scientist, so I'm not going to stake my career on these things, especially when you're looking at 2080 and 2090. Um, but most climate scientists believe uh, that in the United States, at least, that we're going to have much wetter winters and much drier summers. Um, that most climate scientists believe that we're going to have more heat waves. Uh, and what this particular slide shows is that uh, a, an extreme event is defined today as happening once every 20 years. That is considered to be an extreme heat wave. What you see here is the, uh, the color coded of when those types of events are likely to occur in the future. Dark brown means that that 1 in 20 event today will occur every year. Kansas is dark. Okay, well, actually, so is Georgia, but, but, but so, actually, so is the entire country. Um, so, so there is an issue here with regard to, to heat waves. Uh, number of days above 90 degrees temperature. Okay, now this, you have to be careful. These are different scenarios. Uh, the middle one is kind of what's called the lower emission scenario, which is, quote, the best case scenario. And the bottom one is, uh-oh, we've got more than we expected in terms of nasty emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. And the color scheme here is the number of days per year uh, that you're going to have 90 degrees or more temperature in the year uh, 2080, okay? Now, again, I'm not going to stake my career on it, but if you have the worst case scenario, there's Kansas, uh, and it's all yellow, uh, which in this scale means 120 days per year, uh, 90 degrees or more uh, temperature. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. That's what the models uh, say, climate models say. Precipitation change, again, you can see the darker brown means less precip precipitation. The blue means more precipitation. Uh, you can see again by season uh, what this implies. 